Hello YouTubers, thank you for joining me today. Uh, what I am working on today is replacing the motherboard on my Samsung NP940X3M laptop. Uh, the issues I was having with this laptop. Uh, I would notice that it will randomly stop charging. Uh, I will plug it into charge, the battery will be at 10%, I will come in the next day, sometimes it will be at 100%. Sometimes it will be at 80%, sometimes it will be 5% below what it was the day before when I plugged it into charge. Uh, I thought it might be a bad battery, so I said when I get some time I will purchase a new battery and put it in and see if that fixes it. Uh, a couple of days later I noticed that the USB-C port which is located on this side was not working. Uh, it wouldn't send any power out, it wouldn't receive any power. This laptop is capable of being charged through the USB-C port and the uh, AC adapter port right here. Um, it wouldn't accept or send any power out and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't recognize any USB devices. Uh, so I said, okay, it's probably the motherboard. Uh, day after that, the touchpad stopped working. Uh, so I was able to get a motherboard for it. I got it off, a, off eBay, it was a used uh, motherboard. Uh, put it in, nothing worked. It, it wouldn't even boot up to BIOS. Uh, turns out that the motherboard is defective. Then uh, I was able to find another motherboard uh, from a slightly different configuration of a laptop. I think it's a new, it's a new motherboard, but it was listed as being uh, used on a slightly different version of this laptop, which had the larger hard drive, which doesn't really matter because the hard drive is plug and play. It sits right here, so you can update the hard drive anytime, any day you want to. Uh, but all the connections, all the pinouts, all other major components, CPU, uh, GPU are all the same. So we're going to go ahead and replace this. It's uh, really easy to replace, but I decided I will record it. Uh, in case you have the same exact issues, that way you kind of know that somebody tried with replacing the motherboard and it either worked or didn't work. Uh, it's going to be recorded in real time, so that way you will know exactly how long it takes and uh, maybe learn from a few mistakes that I've made or will make. Uh, you want to start with a nice uh, small Phillips uh, screwdriver. Uh, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, four, seven, eight, nine. I forgot. I forgot how to count for a second. They are all the same length, so you do not have to worry about uh, keeping track of which location each bolt, each screw came out of. Uh, you have to be really careful with that. Some laptops, they tend to have uh, longer screws around the, lap the screen hinges. Other ones tend to have uh, longer bolts in the middle just to kind of hold, uh, hold the sender tighter. Uh, you just have to be really careful because if you put one of those longer screws into a position where it doesn't belong, it might damage something on the other side. You might get lucky and it might not be anything on the other side, but um, if it's on this area, you know the touchpad is there. Uh, if it's over here, the hinges, the LCD ribbon displays, uh, it, it's, it's a good um, it's a good thing to keep track of any uh, the, the screws. Even though it might not be vital on one laptop, it might be really vital on another uh, co computer or another electronic component. Uh, opening it, uh, I like to use these things. I, I believe they're guitar picks. Uh, really cheap. I use them to open uh, phone screens and everything. You kind of have to wedge it in here. Uh, I've done this before so I know there is nothing behind here. If you do that, if you do this with something that you don't know what's right behind the the opening, you there might be any ribbon cables that you might damage or uh, any components that you might damage. So what you want to do is just not, not go too deep. Just 
a hair. As long as you, you, you can get some leverage to kind of pry off the screen or the packing or anything. Uh, the way to remove this, uh, it just pulls up, but on this side, the vents are actually curved and they actually hug the laptop. So what you need to do is kind of, while you're opening it, kind of push up. This is what I was talking about. Okay, this is our baby right here. Really easy. Uh, if you ever need to replace the battery, really easy to do. Just remove the backing and then remove one, two, three, four screws and the connector right here. One thing I love about uh, having some having uh, electronics or any devices that are very popular, uh, you find a lot of videos out there. These screws are different than the ones that hold the backing plate on to the laptop, the cover. So just make sure the battery screws you keep them separately. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case with everything. Uh, well, with this line of laptops, but. Uh, the screws that hold the cover in place are silver and then these are black in color that hold the battery. And you will notice that the, the screws that hold the battery and the motherboard besides one or two screws that are slightly longer and slightly shorter, uh, all the other screws are the same. So you remove four screws from the battery and it just pulls out nothing special. I was actually surprised to see that there, it had no adhesive to hold it in place but I guess it has these these dubs right here and these uh, foam pads plus the screws that hold it in place so I think it will be okay without it. I think it's okay without uh, without any additional support or glue. Alright so let's see These little picks are uh, very handy. I'm not sure what kind of material they're made of. They're really hard, pointy on one side and then they have a flat end on the other side so you can pry up things. They're really good for the connectors. Uh, okay, so we have uh, one connector right here that goes to, the, to, to one of the speakers. Another connector right here that I believe goes to the keyboard just lift up this stuff. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. This connector goes to the to the keyboard, I believe. So just flip this tab up, and then the ribbon cable just slides out. Don't ever force these cables. Uh, they, I mean, they can handle a lot of uh, a lot, they can handle a lot of uh, pulling power if you pull them straight. But the second you go sideways a little bit, they they, they rip, and then it's just a pain to replace. Uh, they're easy to replace, but then you have to order it, find the correct one, wait for it to get to you. Uh, this uh, ribbon cable right here goes to the touchpad. Just lift up this tab right here. Pull the blue tab slides right out. Uh, this one goes to I am not sure what this goes to. Oh well we shall never know. No, I'm just kidding it. I do not know what this goes to. The keyboard is right behind here, but I think this is the key. We'll, we'll see once we remove the motherboard. I don't remember what goes where. Just this, uh, this ribbon cable has way too few contacts to be for the keyboard. Uh, another ribbon cable right here. Uh, this ribbon cable connects the motherboard on this side 
to the daughter board on this side which has the use two USB ports attached the power uh, the power uh, button switch the other speaker the stylus uh, sensor the Wi-Fi card so if you have any issues with only one side of the laptop it might be this board or this connection right here this ribbon cable same way just lift up the tab and pull the cable out uh, the LCD display cable uh, okay so this one you'd lift this little securing tab up it's a metal tab you lift it up and then you kind of pull the connector away let me see if you guys can see there it is uh, you do have to remove it from the clip right here because there is a screw right under it that's another thing you, you have to watch for any hidden screws so. all right then uh, one thing to um, one thing that I, I learned I found out the hard way uh, these screwdrivers are really really useful um, they have these little bits over here you just put them in uh, you can find them really cheap online you buy the whole kit for 10 bucks uh, don't get the cheap ones get the better ones spend some money on them even if you use it once in a while because the size of the tips are actually slightly different between the cheaper variation of the tools and the more expensive uh, version of them uh, you find that even something stutter as a Philips head let's say they have, if, even if they have the same number this one is a PH0 even if they have the same stutter the same number stamped on them you might you will find that the cheaper tools do not fit the screws as snugly so say so you strip a little screw right in the middle of a motherboard good luck trying to get it out so let's move on uh, motherboard oh, I'm sorry uh, the hard drive just one little screw ah see what happens this is what I wanted to tell you I forgot uh, you secure the bit in the screwdriver you apply some force to it and the bit just slides in uh, now when you are doing a screw or something uh, if the bit slides down and the screwdriver actually hits one of these little tiny transistors or components or whatever they are uh, you knock it loose then you're 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 gone you you will never find you will never find which one is uh loose because guess what they're not going to come out completely loose they're going to just crack a joint and then they're just going to stay in place and will not make contact anyway so what you want to do is just use the extension that they have just slide it in the screwdriver and then this bit no much no matter how mo how much force you apply to it uh, it will not go into the screwdriver so you, you don't run the risk of the screwdriver slipping and hitting something uh, so let's move on um, screws we need to remove the fan for the heatsink so let's do this first uh, there is one screw right here and the screws from the motherboard and the battery are the same so you don't need to worry about that well at least this screw is the same as the ones with the battery another screw right here another one right here Uh, with this uh, with these screws removed we can actually remove the fan uh, if you if your laptop fan is running a max all the time and um, you're not really doing anything CPU intensive or GPU intensive on the laptop and you find out that your fan is running a full speed 
a lot of times you there is uh, dust or lint and whatever they will clog up they will attach themselves to the blade of the fan and uh, there will be a major build up there and then they will also collect right up against the the back of the heatsink over here the fins of the heatsink so they prevent the air from going through then your fan has to run a higher speed trying to compensate for that and uh, the higher the higher speed it runs the more lint it pushes into the into the already stuck lint and then it's a, it's a never ending cycle uh, so if your laptop or computer is running at uh, the fan is running at max it might be something as simple as cleaning up any lint or dust from these uh, vents or the actual fan itself uh, okay. another screw right actually let's remove the hard drive first these this this little hard drives used to be so expensive a couple of years ago and now like everything you can find 128 gigabytes of uh, of these drives for for like 60 bucks and good quality too Uh, another screw right here right underneath the LCD display cable uh, oh you want to be careful the hard the the bolt that holds the hard drive in place is actually a lot a lot shorter than uh, than the other screws uh, does I mean it doesn't really matter because it it has it has uh, an extension right here that you can screw into and even if you put a longer bolt it will still it still has room to screw into but then you're gonna have a shorter screw somewhere else that it will not it, just try to keep it keep tab of where they go uh, there is a support bracket here that supports the USB-C port, the HDMI port, the headphone port and charging port uh, three screws go ahead and remove those Just lift up this tab right here. Just lift it up and then just pull out. Same thing as with the back cover. It has uh, has a little indentation, like a little. It catches underneath the chassis over here. Uh, another screw right here. That should be it. Uh, again, make sure you have all the ribbon cables disconnected. The ribbon cable that goes to the daughter board, uh, whatever cable this is. Ribbon cable that goes to um, touchpad. Ribbon cable that I thought was going to the keyboard, but I'm not sure right now. Uh, one of the speakers, the LCD display cable. Just, just pull it out this way and then just kind of slide it out. Sorry, I had to pause the video. Uh, the train passes by 20 feet, 25 feet in that direction away from me. So it, it can be very loud. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, once you get a replacement component, before you get too into it, uh, try to find, uh, try to match all the numbers in the stickers, uh, any numbers on the little uh, chips, location of the ribbon cables uh, but like I said uh, this motherboard is actually fr from a slightly different uh, variation of the exact same la of the the same series of laptop so let's see if that works uh, the company I got it from uh, I will post the link down below uh, really good people they they answered my emails they uh, it was shipped the same day three hours after I paid for it, it was shipped. Um, so yeah, the, uh, just try to match the numbers. Once you install the component like this, uh, it, sometimes it leaves marks. Uh, this is a brand new motherboard, uh, so you might not be able to return it if, they, if, if, if the buyer, if the seller sees that you've actually installed it previously. Uh, okay, removing the heatsink. 
really easy, just flip the motherboard. Three screws holding it in place. Uh, no specific uh, location for each of the screws, they're all the same size. My uh, thermal paste. Uh, while I'm getting while I'm getting the things to clean the thermal paste off, uh, keep in mind uh, thermal pastes they do expire. So if you have uh, any thermal any type of thermal paste that you purchased years ago, uh, they do expire. Now how much does how much that affects the the performance of the thermal paste? I do not know. Uh, I mean, this is my personal laptop. Uh, I can replace the thermal paste anytime I want to. So I'm actually using one that I purchased a couple of years ago. Uh, see if um, if it makes any difference on the overheating and whatnot. And we don't really need to clean the old motherboard off. Uh, I just clean it off a little bit so it doesn't make any messes. Don't go away from cleaning it. Uh, like I said, it has little components right next to the CPU and GPUs. Uh, if your paper towel gets caught or fabric towel, if it gets caught on one of those, it just rips right out. You want to use some kind of uh, thermal paste cleaner. Uh, this is Arctic Clean, I believe uh, Arctic Silver. The company that makes Arctic Silver is the one that makes these two. Uh, thermal paste remover and thermal paste, uh, the thermal surface purifier. Uh, they work really well. Uh, you will see what I mean. Really, they make it really easy to clean the thermal, the old thermal paste off. This thermal paste is new. I, ju I just put it like uh, last week when I tried the other motherboard I purchased uh, from eBay and it wasn't, it was defective. So you want to do a slight clean right there. Um, if you have a laptop or um, any kind of computer, keep in mind that uh, the thermal paste that it came with, if you, especially if it's a couple of years old, once the computer goes through heating and cooling cycles, CPUs, they get up to what, 100? 10, 120 degrees, I believe, Celsius. Don't, don't, do not quote me on that. But different CPUs that have different uh, thermal, uh, thermal ratings and whatnot. Uh, you will find on order, order computers, once you open up the, you remove the heatsink from the GPU, you find that thermal paste is completely solid. That's, uh, they, they solidify after a while and they no longer conduct heat as well. You want to do, uh, give it a couple of passes with the purifier. Uh, it actually just removes any oils, any uh, any contaminants. Uh, it does smell kind of a mix of acetone and uh, rubbing alcohol. And again, I'm doing this in real life, so this is exactly how long it's going to take you to replace the the motherboard on your computer so don't be afraid what's the worst that you can do even even if you never uh, done this repair before or even if you cannot find the specific uh, the repair for the specific laptop that you're looking for they're all pretty much the same and might be a little they're of course going to be different the way how you open them what screws you need to remove the process will be a little bit different, but the basics are the same. And do not be afraid, what's the worst that can happen? You're gonna break it more. Especially if you plan on fixing it, and you need, you, you're planning on actually paying somebody to fix it. Eh, fuck it up a little bit more. G give, them some, give them the money's worth, if you were gonna pay to have it fixed anyway. Um, thermal paste. Uh, if the CPU and GPUs are the surface area of them is larger. It's a really good idea to use some kind of uh, credit card or uh, what are you right here? Anything. 
Uh, yeah, even if you see the numbers, it's a, it's a prepaid card, the gift card, it doesn't matter. Um, when the surface area is larger, um, some kind of card, like like I said, credit card, debit card, whatever, visas work really well, um, low interest. Uh, if the area of the CPU is uh, larger, something like a credit card will give, it has a little flex, so once you, you apply some pressure on the thermal paste, it will spread it more evenly, and then uh, it just it's just easier to handle. What I'm going to do is just apply some uh, thermal paste. You don't need too much. Uh, I mean, they are. Um, I'm not sure if every thermal paste is that way, but I would assume that it is. They all are. Uh, they're not thermal, they're not um, electrically conductive. So you don't, have, you don't need to worry about uh, if you get some of it in the little components next to the CPUs, GPUs, on every, or any of the components that you're trying to apply thermal paste to. Once we put the, once we put the heatsink back on, the pressure of the heatsink is going to spread uh, the thermal paste out a little bit more. Uh, as you can see, the surface area of this heatsink is very tiny. Uh, larger heatsinks on uh, on computers or desktop processors. Uh, what you can do is, uh, if you notice the surface is not as smooth. Uh, what you can do is just get the really fine sandpaper or some kind of um, maybe like a 2000 grit, 3000 grit. Just give it a light rub to even out the surface. And uh, I think creating those little micro scratches on the surface, it will give the thermal paste more uh, surface area to work with. Um, so now to install it back in, uh, flip it upside down of course. Gently place it right on top. Give it a little wiggle so it sits nicely. Apply pressure with one figure, then turn it over. Install one of the screws. You don't want to. You don't want to tighten. Uh, once you snug in one of the screws. Just give it a little a little wiggle so you can kind of spread the thermal paste evenly. I think I'm having performance exciting in front of the uh, camera. Snug them up a little bit. Uh, these screws actually have, um, have a stop. They're not threaded all the way. There is a little neck that um, it bottoms out on the heatsink, so it doesn't matter how tight you get them to, they will only they will they will only compress uh, they will only compress a certain amount of uh, travel, and they don't compress anymore. So you cannot really over tighten the, the heatsink uh, because in a case like this, if you were to over tighten any of the screws on the edges or both all three screws on the edges, what it would do is it would like it lift up the the heatsink instead of being uh, flat, it would just kind of like lift it up a little bit in the middle so you would lose contact with the CPU and the GPU. Uh, so there's that. I'll just make sure the the seal, the seal for, uh, I don't know if this is, uh, it's not a heat seal. It does not make contact with, um, with the RAM modules that I have under here. There is four modules. There are four modules right here. Four modules on the back side. I believe that gives us, 8 gigabytes of total RAM for this room. Uh, anyway, that's not important. 
just put the seal back in. Or actually, it might be something to isolate the RAM modules from uh, from the heat of the CPU and the GPU, or maybe some kind of electromagnetic uh, seal. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and try to install them back on the laptop. Uh, let me zoom out so you guys can see everything. Alright, uh, same thing. Just reverse process. Put this end of the panther port into the laptop first. So the ports kind of go underneath this lip right here. Uh, make sure you don't pinch any of the ribbon cables under the motherboard. The LCD display cable right here. Alright. Um, let's start assembling. One screw right here. Keep in, keep in mind the little screws, you don't want to go ape on them just snag them up also um, over time this the the laptop in itself it's a small area small surface area so they get really hot and all the heat stays inside with the components uh, yeah the little fan helps to cool it down but all the components within the case of the laptop they heat up really a lot and those heating and cooling cycles it's what really kills electronics so what you want to do if you snag the screws way too much if you tighten them way too much that doesn't give any room for anything to expand uh, so we have one two three four screws right there uh, heat seal the, I'm sorry the securing seal is here is next just put the ends underneath uh, the lip first Secure the other three screws. Uh, installing the fan. Also, when you build um, computers or testing components or whatever, uh, do not do not plug in the. Do not plug in the motherboards and the, with the processors on them without any type of heatsink. Uh, it will get from zero to um, it will get from room temperature to melting the CPU or melting a hole through the motherboard in like 45 seconds. Uh, another screw right here. And I. Up. See, you guys get to see me mess up. I do it all the time, but just not on camera. What can work for you, or what what I do once I once I try to take something apart that I've never taken apart before or that is uh, well not mine if it's mine I don't care I'll fix it I don't care if I have an extra screw left over at the end uh, but if if it's somebody else's and uh, they're paying me to do any type of repair um, what I find really helpful for me especially for for laptops you just get a standard sheet of paper you kind of outline the laptop outline the components and then kind of place the screws exactly on the components like where you get get this screw from the top right corner top left whatever you just place it on the same exact uh, side of the paper and it helps you keep track of screws uh, okay so I, what I did I put the bolt underneath um, I put the bolt first instead of putting the heat the, the fan first
Okay, all the screws are done. Okay, installing the ribbon cable now. Actually, let's install the hard drive first. It, it can only go in one way. Uh, if you see the contacts, this side has uh, four, I believe, three or four. The other side has uh, one or two more. So it, there, there is no way to put it the wrong way. I mean, it is if you, there is if you force it, but anyway, forget the little screw goes secures the, the hard drive down. It's really light, so it is not like it has to hold any type of load. It just keeps it snug. Uh, okay, let's install the ribbon cables. First, one of these. These little tabs, they're here for a reason. Uh, help you pull the cable out, but they also can help you install it nice and straight. Uh, so you lift the little tab up. Let me zoom in for you guys. Sorry, getting used to the camera to really see your camera. Getting used to the whole process of taking videos as well. Um, kind of like slide it in place. And then while, while you're holding it in place, just push the tab down. Next one is right here. Same thing, has a longer tab, makes it easier to hold and place. Uh, same thing here. Speaker connector right here. Most of these connectors they only go one way. I mean, not most of these connectors. They, I, all the connectors I've seen in any type of mass-produced electronic component, they they only go in one way. There is no there is no way to to mess up that way. Putting on the LCD cable, you can use this tab. Don't, don't try to force it from the cable. Just use the holding tab to kind of like secure it in place. Just put, put it down, snug against the board and kind of slide it over. It's going to find its, its own way uh, into the connector. It, it's not like the other, most of the other connectors where it kind of like sna it snaps in. It actually has to slide underneath in the connector and then the little securing tab holds it in place. Uh, battery is next. Uh, four screws. Always remove the battery when you're fixing something. Um, I know you're like, uh, I, I know I've done it. I had, I'm too lazy to undo a little shield or something over the battery. Connector, so I just leave the battery plugged in while I'm working on something else, something minor like replacing a fan or whatever. But what happens if you drop a little screw into the motherboard, into a component that has power to it going, go, power going to it at all times? You're screwed. Apple, Apple actually uh, screwed a whole bunch of people like that uh, when um, I forget which model of phone it was which model of iPhone it was, when they changed uh, the LCD connector, which is the broken screen size is the most common problem with iPhones. Uh, and then just uh, the connector right here, you just put it on top and then just push it in place. Uh, so they changed the, I don't know why they changed it, but the, the LCD connector stopped um, the LCD connector actually stopped working. Uh, 
stop. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm tired. The LCD connector actually had power going to it at all times. So even if you were doing something as minor as replacing the, uh, the screen on an iPhone, you would actually find that there was power to it. So putting the new LCD in, if it was, uh, if the connector went in slightly crookedly, um, and two of the contacts make, made contact with uh, with the pin that had power, uh, sparks would fly and then you burned the... Most of the time I believe it was the, the new screen that would be burned, but then you can actually damage the board too. Uh, Alright, so it works, touchpad works. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you probably cannot see. Touchpad works right there. Uh, let's see if the charging port works. Yes, right here. It's plugged in, unplugged, plugged in. Um, I do not have a USB type C um, device here, uh, but if it works, I will let you guys know. Uh, okay. So, there's that. Putting the back cover on. Oh, and I believe I forgot to mention, uh, you do need to remove the S Pen beforehand. Um, if you see, the, you see the cover has a little notch that goes underneath the pen, so the pen needs to be removed before you do anything. Uh, everything is looking good, no extra screws. Funny thing, like uh, when I'm fixing my own electronics, I, I would say 95% of the time I have extra screws. It's uh, so you clip on this side first, then you kind of like little start clumping the edges. As I was saying about the screws, is uh, you have an extra screw, it doesn't really matter. When my, when my friends, my wife is making fun of me for the extra screws, you, you know, you can tell them that oh, you figured out a way to uh, to save the company couple of uh, bucks here and there by using extra uh, fewer screws for their products. Go ahead and install the screws. Like I said, what I'm gonna edit uh, when I edit the video because of the train that was here and whatnot, uh, I will not cut it down to, um, I will not edit it to become a short video. I want it to be a video that's real time, that you guys can see exactly how long it takes. And it really does not take long at all. Any repairs, especially for electronics, they do not take long at all. I mean, you don't wanna be sitting there with a couple of friends talking and uh, or listening or watching a movie while you're fixing something. You just want your full attention into what you're doing. You mess up one little screw, one longer screw, you put it somewhere where it doesn't belong, it might damage something on the other side. It might, on the other side there might be a motherboard or uh, an LCD screen or anything. You don't want to mess it up because you were not able to pay attention for half an hour or whatever. Anyway, thank you for watching. I am going to let you know down in the comments if the USB Type-C port works, but as you guys saw, the, as you guys saw, the everything, no, the charging port works, the touchpad works, and I am really happy about that. Um, the board for it, the, the used one I found, was 85 bucks. The new one I purchased was 200 something bucks and uh, the cheapest, uh, I knew I was going to do the repair myself but I wanted to shop around and see what people charge so I can let you guys know. Um, local repair shops, uh, even though they said uh, it was free diagnostics, uh, to actually fix it, uh, they would charge anywhere from six 
45 I think it was this, the lowest one I found to uh, something crazy like $900 I brought this laptop new off eBay for 7 something so yeah go figure thank you very, thank you very much for watching I'll see you guys next time